so the first component of the program here, first year flowering from seed, there is a lot of great breeding going on in seed perennials. Um, I've seen a lot of new inputs um, as far as uh, new first year flowering varieties go. This makes it very inexpensive for someone to get into the liner program or the, uh, the first year flowering perennials from seed because we're gonna use 288s, you know, 128s, maybe a larger plug, but a 288 plug is gonna hit a really great price point. And so we can do high volume programs with that lower price point for you know, box stores or for IGC markets. And for perennials from seed, we're gonna grow them just like annuals. We're gonna take a 288 and we're gonna plant it just like we would uh, say a petunia or a geranium plug, something like that. We're gonna grow them very simply. No special feeds, no special culture on a lot of these items. And so Pan American and Keefe Seed has this forcing guide on our website, uh, or you can get this at, at uh, other locations where there's a tremendous amount of information out there. And so on this spreadsheet here, we've got a list of our varieties from Keith Seed. We're gonna give you our plug size. We're gonna show you the weeks to finish uh, and our temperatures here. And so we can see these are annual temperatures. Um, something like the Dianthus, it might say a cooler temperature. That's because it can, it's gonna help it stay shorter. But, you know, if we do it, just throw it in with our annuals, we might need a little bit more PGR. But generally, we're going to grow these like an annual. We're going to transplant and grow in the same type of containers. Finish under the proper day like this is our, our weeks to flower. And so you can see here, we're looking at week 19. And so this is a forcing schedule for Mother's Day. This is our numbers to week, uh, numbers uh, weeks to grow because it's going to take a little bit longer in the springtime with those temperatures. And then one critical factor to look at here, this is gonna be a difference with some perennials versus some annuals, is that we're gonna need long days on some items. And so some we could just grow under natural photo period, but other ones are gonna require night interruption lighting or some sort of long day lighting. And what does that mean? What is long day lighting? It's very simple to do and really there's no way anyone can say I'm not set up for that because I've heard that so many times. All you need is a light bulb and electricity and a, a simple 24 hour timer. It is that easy. You turn on this light bulb from 10 p.m. until 2 a.m. That's going to make these items feel like it's the middle of summer. And so our long day perennials, we'll be able to get those into flower for Mother's Day. It's very easy to do. Another program for lighting would be day extension. Turn on the lights at the end of the day as the sun's going down and make that day last longer. Uh, this can be done with HID, you know, with grow lights as well, but simple light bulbs are effective. Now, a third way, and really the one that I have found to be one of the best would be morning extension lighting. This will be turning on the lights roughly 2 a.m. Now, if you have computer controls in your greenhouse and you use a negative diff program, you can start dropping your temperatures at 2 a.m. And so those cooler temperatures, when these lights come on, that's gonna help promote a shorter, more compact perennial. And so the combination of diff and long day lighting is a very effective tool for high quality perennials. And so a few of my favorites from seed, uh, Bellas, the new Dianthus Rockin series, absolutely amazing. And then there's multiple types of English lavenders that are suitable for uh, this first year flowering program. But then here is my list of ones that do require that supplemental lighting, that day length extension, that night interruption lighting. Uh, we have Echinacea, we have Coreopsis, Double the Sun, Sunkiss, uh, some of these varieties. These are the ones that are gonna naturally be flowering in the garden, say uh, June, maybe end of June, beginning of July. And so that's natural photo periods. We can artificially supplement that and get these to flower for Mother's Day very easily. We've got all that scheduling worked out for you. And so I want to thank you all for joining me in the break room for your session of Ball Tech On Demand. Thanks.